Okay. <clears throat> Hand quilting. I'm uh, I'm working right now on this little uh, section in the center of this applique, and uh, I'm doing uh, very close together rows of stitching that will fill this in, uh, similar to what's been done in here, uh, and it's just a matter of going around and around and around. Um, I will uh, move out to the outside edge so you can see maybe better how that works, but uh, <coughs> I'm about ready to change my needle pretty soon, so I'll, I'll uh, finish this up and then I'll load up a a new, uh, I'll thread up a new needle and show you how I do that. And uh, I just realized I don't have my glasses on. Oh, much better. I have a pair of glasses that I wear when I'm quilting and uh, often take them off when I get up and walk around because it's a lot easier to uh, uh, see uh, when you're not wearing your magnifying glasses. <coughs> but for close quilting I pretty much need it. My method of hand quilting is very different from what you've probably seen others do. Uh, I, uh, I don't use the thimble anymore, and uh, I don't really do that traditional uh, rocking stitch that many folks do. Mine is uh, sort of my own invention uh, based on what worked well for me and um, one of the things that uh, at some point I'm going to have to figure out how to do is to show you what my hand underneath is doing because that really is doing really just as much work as what's on top. And I've got uh, that finger underneath, it's my index finger on my underneath hand is actually what's pushing the needle up from the bottom back to the top. Now I've gotten to the end where I really don't have enough thread left to do anything, so I need to end it. Now I could do a knot, or what I've been doing lately is I put it, put the needle back in between the layers, so it's gliding between the uh, uh, t the top and the bottom through the batting. Go in along the last row of stitching and I do that twice and then once back the other way. Now it's important not to have this to have that stay between the layers or it's going to show on the back uh, and then I can just cut it off. That's not going to go anywhere that that, ex that thread went back and forth so should be fine. This uh, little needle that I'm using is a number 11 between and uh, it's, um, it's pretty small. I have uh, uh, this particular brand has a pretty big eye. I don't remember what kind it is actually. So thread my needle and then we'll do a, uh, a quilter's knot on the end. So I take the needle, I put the, uh, uh, the thread on top, go around it three times, then I just slide and there's the knot. Now, the knot will go into, uh, or the, the uh, thread will go into the uh, fabric, 
and pin, and then out where I, wherever it is that I want to start. And uh, that is between the layers. So it's going through the batting, but not through the back. So that knot at the end is going to get buried. So I bring it out to where I want to, that's where the stitching will start. Now my knot needs to get buried inside the fabric. I find that uh, if I hold my fingernail in front of it and then I give the, uh, the thread a tug, that pulls it through. If I don't, uh, if I pull too hard, sometimes the knot comes out the other end. Now, I don't know if you can see what I'm doing here, but I'm going the needle goes in and then my finger underneath is doing this. It's pushing up. But the tip of the needle isn't hitting my finger. Uh, let's see if you can envision this. The needle goes way in, not just barely through. It goes in pretty far and then my finger comes up to it and pushes it and slides up against it until from the back this might show it here so here's the needles underneath and and uh, and I I wait until I mean I don't know if you can see this but do you see that the point of that needle so when I'm pushing up from from the bottom I can see based on where that bulge is where it's going to come up. So essentially I'm the needle is through and I'm pushing up on the bottom with that finger. So and I I hold the needle like this rather than, you know, when people do it with a thimble, they're they're not even really holding the needle. They're just putting it on top and kind of rocking it back and forth. I hold on to it. And so it goes in and I'm, I'm holding it and it goes it goes in pretty far and then with the bottom finger I push up until I see that little spot where it is that I want that stitch to be and then I grab it and push it back in and then tip it back until it comes back up I don't know if you can see how that's working but that's how I do it and uh, uh, you uh, will be able to, uh, and I keep missing that stitch because I don't, I don't want it to be too big. There we go. Um, most often I'll do three, four stitches at a time before I pull uh, through. And uh, you can do, there are some people who do one at a time, and I know some people who do ten. They'll fill up the whole needle, and then they end up needing to have some device to pull it out. I've seen people using pliers to pull the needle through. Uh, well, that just seems like a lot of extra work to me. So I do enough so that I've got a few stitches on there when I push it through there's still enough here to grab and it comes through easy. The, um, the advantage that uh, you have from doing more than one at a time I suppose is that theoretically it's a little faster. Um, the disadvantage is particularly if you're using a thick fabric or a thick batting the more stitches you have on harder it is to pull that needle through. Uh, so it's, um, it's up to you, whatever feels comfortable, and I don't do the same on every quilt. This one's uh, a, a nice, uh, easy to quilt through, uh, good quality cotton that's been washed a couple of times, and that really makes it easier to hand quilt through. It loosens the fibers up, gets all the sizing out of it, uh, a nice uh, washed fabric is much easier to hand quilt. And uh, same with the backing. And the batting I'm using is um, Hobbs Tuscany wool. 
and it's my absolute favorite for hand quilting because it is so easy to uh, quilt true. It's not. It's uh, it's warm because it's wool, but it's very different texture than cotton. It's not dense. It's it's quite airy and light, and uh, the needle glides right through it um, because of the amount of air that's in it. It's, um, anyway, it's my favorite for hand quilting, and it really it has a nice loft. It it shows uh, my stitching uh, uh, definition is good. Um, so anyway, this is uh, this is how I do this. And what I'm doing on this quilt is called echo quilting. So I'm doing rows and rows of uh, quilting around all the motifs. And uh, let me see if I can get a bit of this from the back to show. <coughs> so here's uh, here's how it looks when there's uh, uh, when it's all filled in. The uh, so it's it's uh, it's a matter of going around and around and around. Here's the filled in section. Here's uh, more of the echo quilting and uh, you might be interested to see the backing. Here's what it looks like on the back. Um, the uh, this, the uh, um, quilting a lot of times shows up more on the back. Um, depends on the fabric. This one's got a little bit of a pattern to it but it, uh, it looks like the quilting is showing quite nicely. And again here here's the uh, here's what wool batting looks like. It's uh, I guess it's got a similar appearance to polyester, actually. Uh, but anyway, that's my uh, it's my favorite batting to use. And uh, other than that, this is uh, hand quilting is not a uh, a rapid, uh, quick endeavor. Uh, I've been working on this quilt uh, for quite some time, and. Uh, many, many, many hours away from getting it done, uh, but it's relaxing and I can do this uh, while I uh, would normally be sitting and doing nothing such as watching television. Uh, I, don't, I don't think I've watched television uh, without some quilting in front of me for five years. Uh, I've always got some project going uh, so that when I'm sitting down in, uh, in, the, in the evening I've got a uh, project to work on. I don't, that way I don't have to actually pay attention to or watch the television. I can, I can pay attention to this. And after you get good at it, your concentration isn't going to be uh, totally focused on getting your stitches perfect. You, uh, you get to the point where you can do this uh, without really thinking and uh, you can still watch your watch TV or listen to music or uh, you can hold conversations with people while you're actually working on the quilting because it just becomes second nature. But it does take practice and uh, it takes practice to learn what uh, works best for you. Uh, everybody's different. Uh, I've, I've seen Many different people do hand quilting, and they all have a different approach slightly. They're not all exactly the same. Uh, a lot of people like to use a big quilting frame. Uh, I have a hard time with that because I, uh, I quilt, uh, in all, I, I, when I'm quilting in a hoop, which this is, this is a 22 inch round uh, hoop on a stand. When I quilt in a hoop, when I need to change directions, I get to here, uh, and I want to quilt that direction. I can turn the hoop to uh, catch up with the direction that I want it to be. On a frame, you have to learn to quilt in every direction. Uh, so 
I get down to here, then I have to pull it this way, and then I have to pull it this way, and when I get ready to turn that corner here, I have to, uh, it's harder. So for me, a hoop is easier. Uh, but again, everybody's different. Uh, I can't begin to imagine how I would do this without something, though. I need the, the hoop is holding the fabric in place. There's some give to the fabric. Uh, and that's important because you need you need some you don't want to have it tight as a drum because you need you need to be able to push up uh, and push down and it's that the bottom hand up and the top hand down that that creates the pressure that's needed to uh, to make a neat nice even stitch I don't know how you do that without something to hold the fabric in place without the hoop and the weight of the quilt holding it all down uh, if I push up with one hand and down with the other, and there's nothing holding it around the edges, it just the, you can't. You know, I don't have enough hands to hold the quilt in place and and do all of that at once. So um, that's me. But some people do it without a hoop. Like I said, I don't know how, but that's what they do. The other the other thing that's uh, that I would note here is I don't mark this. You can see some yellow lines from marking. These are and, and some blue lines. These were my layout lines from uh, when I did the uh, the drawing for the for the embroidery and the uh, uh, other uh, applique parts. Um, so I'm ignoring those. They'll wash out when I'm done. Um, and and this the uh, the echo quilting lines. I just eyeball that, um, and that's good enough for me. It uh, it might look like it's real precise, but that's and that's the goal to make it look like it is, but it really isn't. And as you go around and try to fill in these spaces, you'll find that if you tried to mark it exactly, you'd drive yourself nuts because the the spaces sometimes don't lend themselves to e exactly perfect quarter inch or whatever size marking you want. So you have to be able to be flexible and sort of. Uh, uh, Compromise on the uh, on the amount of space that you're you're allowing between the the pieces. Uh, so sometimes you'll make it a little touch wider or a little touch narrower to fill in those spaces and make it look even. Uh, but anyway, that's how I'm doing the quilting on this one. I've got a, another one started uh, that I've been working on for quite a while that I hope to be able to show you soon. The uh, that top is. Um, has some white fabric in it uh, in the background and the lighting just wasn't working out for me today so I decided to show you this one. I'll be um, I'll be working on uh, that one uh, off and on for quite some time now and uh, I'll show you that one soon. But That's a brief uh, outline of how I do 